Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with John Smith, director of the Rhode Island School of Design Museum. John has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. Thank you, John, for joining right. us. Today. Thanks, Mark. No, I'm happy to be here. So the Rhode Island School of Design is, is such a renowned, internationally renowned school of art and design. Talk about the challenge of running a museum where you have so many backseat drivers right mm -hmm. in the university. Yeah, yeah. Who, who are creating art, who are studying art, who are teaching art, who have made their entire lives art, and now you are running a museum of art in that daunting environment. Talk about that. How, yeah, do, how yeah. does that? Well, first, I mean, I think, you know, there, there obviously there are challenges, but I think for me and I, for the staff of the museum, it's really about um, uh, the enormous advantage of having a museum an art museum in that in, in that environment because you know the one thing we don't have to do uh, that I know a number of my colleagues at other university is look for and college is, is is look for expertise and um, uh, to try and demonstrate our relevancy. You now um, uh, uh, the students, the faculty, the staff at RISD, they understand museums. They understand the importance of museums. So for us, uh, you know, yeah, certainly there are, there are issues around that, but no one disagrees that. An art museum is a central and uh, you know, sort of you know, valued part of the training uh, that the students receive and something that they all uh, eventually aspire to be a part of a museum, uh, to be in a museum's collection. So I think, you know, the museum was uh, really sort of part of the founder's vision of the Rhode Island School of Design when it was started in 1877, uh, this idea of having a museum that served you know, sort of both the pedagogical uh, mission of the school uh, to acquire works of art for the training of young budding artists and designers, uh, but also the uh, public side of a museum, uh, that they also embedded this notion that the RISD Museum would be the museum for Providence, Rhode Island, for the state of Rhode Island. So we've always been the public face of the Rhode Island School of Design and the place where artists and the public interact. So we're really a forum. And you know, this was 1877. We're now 140 years into our history. And that sort of core mission um, has remained really strong. You know, there have been ups and downs and you know, disagreements between museum directors and college presidents and um, so over, over that time. But the core of that, uh, unlike many uh, American museums that uh, originally had an art school attached to them, like the MFA in Boston and the Metropolitan Museum, the Art Institute of Chicago. Those, you know, over time, those entities grew apart and the school and the museum acted quite separately. But at RISD, that relationship continues to be incredibly strong. And for me and for the staff at the museum, and I think also for the students at RISD, the staff at RISD, um, uh, that bond, that unique bond, uh, really is, is incredibly enriching for, for all of us. Talk about the dimensions of the collection, because the, the institution has been in existence. It's one of the large, largest continually operating museums in yeah. the United States. Yeah. Um, and the collection is quite extraordinary as well. It's an amazing collection. It's um, um, uh, sort of, we're, we're getting close to 100,000 objects in the collection, and you know, we 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 talk about ourselves as an encyclopedic uh, 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 collection. That's probably not entirely accurate because there are areas there are that strengths. we simply don't have. There are strengths, uh, uh, you know, but we have a, a really strong collection of of, of antiquities, Greek and Roman, uh, and then all the way through uh, through contemporary art with you know real strengths in in works on paper, uh, costume and textiles is one of our uh, probably our strongest, one of our our very strongest collections of about twenty eight thousand pieces in that collection, and it really. Um, uh, can see the roots of that collection going back to the roots of uh, the textile industry right. in Rhode Island, in New England, and also sort of the very early um, uh, strengths of the Rhode Island School of Design because it really was founded as um, initially as what we would call an industrial arts right. school at the time. It was about training artists and designers 
who would then ideally go off into the textile industry, the jewelry making industry, the silver uh, uh, manufacturers that were so strong and prevalent in, uh, in the Rhode Island region. Uh, so our collections uh, you know, in many ways reflect those early aspirations of the founders of RISD uh, as well. And we continue to, you know, we continue to acquire at a very vigorous, sometimes too vigorous uh, uh, pace, but you know, you know, we, we have acquisition funds and so we build our collections strategically through purchases, but we also have a, you know, a really strong and generous base of donors to the collection and particularly people who uh, see the generative nature of an art museum at an art school and love the idea that art students will be using their gifts um, uh, as a way to uh, uh, sort of learn and study and then ultimately create new work from what they've learned from, uh, uh, from these works. Talk about how your exhibition schedule unfolds with, with 100,000 pieces or almost 100,000 pieces in your collection you actually have the luxury of, of focusing almost entirely uh, on your collection, but you don't, do you? We don't, but we're moving more um, seriously in that in that direction. Um, you know, sort of, uh, I'm sort of now sort of, you know, been at the museum for five and a half years, and um, you know, when I came, uh, there had been an interim period without without a permanent director, right. so there wasn't a long term exhibition project or uh, schedule. Um, so that was one of the first things that I did when I come was, you know, work with curators and, you know, just say, you know, what do you want to do? What do you, what are you thinking about? So we put together um, a, you know, a, an exhibition schedule and then, you know, sort of, you know, last year and, 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 and early in this year, uh, we really sat down and began thinking about what you just, what, what you just said, you know, the, when we're only showing roughly three to 4% of our collection, um, um, you know, is it is it sort of the right decision to um, uh, to be borrowing works, to be bringing things in when we haven't really fully explored uh, our own collection? Particularly, it would take 20, 30 years to to expose to rotate, the, to rotate that, the collection, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and it's wonderful to have the objects, but if the objects sit in a dark room. Yeah. Yeah. So this summer, we, you know, the, the the curators, some of our educators, and I, uh, you know, just sort of, you know, took, you know, sort of, you know, a retreat, went off site, and really had a lot of serious and kind of, you know, deep and ultimately very rewarding um, uh, discussions about what we want our exhibition program to look like, and also, you know, to try and move ourselves away from thinking in this sort of very, um, uh, sort of. Uh, b binary way that you've got the permanent collection galleries and then you have your sp uh, your special exhibitions right. and to think why can't we think of the entire museum the entire you know 35,000 square feet of exhibition space at the museum as um, as a special exhibition and that we treat our permanent collection in sort of you know this very sort of you know continually rethinking rehanging reinstalling so it isn't that we finish are you know, installing our Asian permanent collection galleries and then just sort of let them sit there for the next five years until it's time for another overhaul. But they were always thinking about how galleries can shift and change, new objects can come in, new relationships between objects can be developed and explored, uh, that we can think about the collection responding more, nimble, more nimbly to the things that are happening in our culture. Um, so I think that you know we're, we've, our moving ourselves away from this idea of putting all of our resources in sort of the more ephemeral special exhibitions and really thinking about the entire organization, the entire museum as a place for, um, uh, for kind of frequent and ongoing change. John Smith, thank you so much for shaping our next generation of artists along with the faculty. And thank you so much for your insights. Right. No, my pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Yeah.